Who's gonna get to their feet first? Who's got the killer instinct to put the other one down in this main event? I'm Pat Monix, and I'm a professional wrestler. My name is Philip Padovani. Um, I go by Jack Shatter, and I am a professional wrestler. Uh, my name is Elliot Paul, and I am a wrestler. Uh, my name is Jack Moody. I'm a professional wrestler. My name, my real name is Melissa. I'm known as Thunder Rosa in the wrestling business. Professional wrestling is a unique business to be in. For some, it has been a dream their whole life. For others, it has come late in life. But everyone has their reasons. I guess Eddie Guerrero got me into wrestling. I remember he was on the TV, and that was it. Just after that, I, I think my dad also liked it, so he just sort of kept encouraging it. And I, it's literally been a part of my life since I was four. The big thing that really got me into wrestling was I picked up at the store a Shawn Michaels Boyhood Dream DVD that just kind of like uh, gave you the synopsis of the year he had leading to his first WWE title run Had a lot of the matches. So uh, that's what made me really like kind of want to like made me love wrestling like in the same sense that I loved like basketball because of Michael Jordan. I liked wrestling because of Shawn Michaels. Um, so that's what got me into being a fan. I loved it as a kid during late 90s, early 2000s. Loved Jericho and Austin, you know, those big characters. And uh, in 2000, fell out of it during high school. And in like 2013 or so, I, uh, I did a comedy show based on the world of pro wrestling and started watching again because I wanted to be good on the comedy show and then just decided I love this more than doing comedy. So, you know, I was, I was going through a lot of, you know, um, whenever, ever, ever since I was a little kid, you know, I, I always thought I was a little bit different and I was bullied a lot. I was bullied a lot in like elementary school, junior high school and um, something that always brought me like, you know, like helped me escape from that reality was like, you know, Monday nights and Friday nights, which was like wrestling. And I'd like sit down in my basement, watch wrestling, like want to be like them, look like them, work out and, you know, like have that charisma. So, um, you know, over the years, I kind of just like morphed into like this wrestler role. And like now I'm standing here, you know, working in front of crowds. So it's it's really cool to see, you know, where this journey in life has taken me. Into wrestling was I was very depressed uh, after college. I was working in a uh, was it a rehab facility? I don't remember. It was either in a rehab facility or I was working as a counselor uh, with kids that have a lot of mental health uh, disabilities and trauma. So I I was doing kind of like wrestling, but I was therapeutic wrestling. You know, you have to restrain the kids once they escalated. So I was really stressful. I started watching um, local indie shows in Oakland in. I just got hooked and one, there was an opportunity for me to do a tryout and my husband suggested that I was really good at doing sports, which I didn't believe it, but I tried it and I started training and that's how I started. Every career begins with training, but wrestling training is different. Mine in Pacifica, California, my original trainers were uh, Dylan Drake and Matt Carlos, but, I train, but I've been trained by a lot, a lot of people in different parts of the world. Trainer, initial trainer was, it was, a mix of people at a place called PCW uh, in the Chicago area. They're no longer in business now, uh, but uh, Jared Priest and um, uh, like that was the main one. Jay Phoenix as well was also a trainer there. And then, uh, then trained with Jared Priest again at Crash Chested, Bryce Benjamin, and then uh, have spent quite a bit of time in Germany training with Walter at WXW. So I was trained slash still trained with uh, Steve Boz, uh, Chicago style wrestling uh, wrestling school. Um, a lot of a lot of guys that you saw there all started uh, with Boz as well. Um, you know I've only been doing this for nine months, so um, you know I'm excited to see um, you know other other opportunities to learn. So, but a lot of it I've learned from Steve Boz, and he's been uh, absolutely incredible help uh, to get to where I want to be. So. Uh, my training was interesting. I'm trained by a lot of people. I'm, I feel like I'm still training now. Uh, I started at the uh, Chicago Style Wrestling School in uh, River Grove. I was trained by Steve Boz and Willie Richardson for a few months, uh, maybe like three, four months. And then I was trained by uh, Kevin Quinn. He started training there. Kevin Quinn, who uh, 
is the former trainer of like the New Japan Dojo in LA. He's a he's a gem. He's a gem and a wealth of knowledge. Uh, spent time with Bryce Benjamin. He trained a lot of people in Chicago. Uh, spent a lot of time with Matt Cage, uh, the wrestler in the Chicago area. And now I'm just picking it up from everybody I, I run into. I'm from the Chicago area, but my parents moved down to Florida. And when they moved down to Florida, it was around the time I was like ready to get into it. And I found a school around Tampa. I got trained by a guy named Frankie Reyes uh, with the help of a guy named Tony Devlin. Uh, a company called DWI, and once that was done, I had my first match with this guy named Prince Iakea, who used to wrestle in WCW for uh, a while, and he, uh, it went really well. Second match didn't go very well. I, I probably had like 10 matches down there, and uh, other than that first one, like none of them I was really proud of. Uh, so when I moved back to Chicago, I was just, I was just there for like the summers and winter breaks during uh, school. When I came back to Chicago, I sought out more training. Uh, a guy named Bryce Benjamin has a company or a uh, training school in Chicago. So I got trained under him. Basically took a year off from wrestling matches to get like retrained by him and take my game to the next level and be the wrestler I knew sh I could and should be. And yeah, after that, I hit the ground running again in 2016. So my first matches were like 2014. I kind of took 2015 off for training. So that's my story with training. Uh, funny stories from my training. It's all funny, man. This is ridiculous. We're all learning how to fall down and hit each other. This is silly. It's all very, very funny. To be uh, frank, not, not everyone could do this. So we, we, we kind of call it like a revolving door because you'll see a lot of people come in and start and then they, like, they, they, they leave and then like some new people come in. So there's like a core group of, of guys that'll stay there, train, practice, and make it through and get their first match. But uh, a lot of it is a revolving door of people, you know, coming to the realization that, you know, it's not, it's not for everyone. Heat night, uh, heat night and uh, hell week. So it, it was very old school uh, over there. Like we had to um, do two weeks of nothing but conditioning before we got in the ring. And we usually had like 15 people signed up, they paid their money and stuff. By the end of Hell Week, we had like five or six, because everybody will be dropping out, they were super out of shape, everybody would be vomiting. And what I did was I outrun everybody, and I would like be like waiting while everybody was just like, oh, it hurts, and I'll just be like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> and also, I kind of enjoy them, see, I enjoy seeing them suffer. Like, and then the Hell, I mean, Heat Night was one day teaching us how to hate each other, um, and uh, just like, being safe. And everybody will hit you in the class. And then like veterans will come and hit you. So, well that's not funny, but I just remember like one time my coach was like, he grabbed my neck and he's like, I love you. Boom, and he hit me and like right on the neck and I just saw stars and I was just like, I wanted to cry, my eye was getting teary and my husband was like across the ring and he's just like, don't you dare to cry. Don't you dare to cry and I'm just like, and then everybody's hitting me. I was like, oh man. Okay, after uh, it was, I've been training for like six months or so. It was just after I had like my first or second match. Uh, they had uh, the place I was training. They had initiation essentially, to where without telling me, everybody, everybody that was training that was had still been working regularly and that were kind of considered vets, decided to they. It's the initiation was they just go in and they call a whole bunch of spots and moves, and you just take all of them. So I took everybody's signatures and finishes and whatever fucking move they wanted to try for, uh, for a good 10 minutes of just taking, like I was laying flat in the middle of the ring, just taking a frog splash, uh, you know, uh, swan ton, uh, and then like get up 3D, like for no reason. It's two people that didn't tag, just like take a 3D. So just got, I just got beat up for 10 to 12 minutes. And then afterwards, like, they're just like, you're in the business now. Like, all right, I just, I mean, I've already had two shows. Uh, I feel like I'm already in the business, kind of, but you just wanted to beat me up. After training, it's time to have your first match, but it doesn't always go as planned. Uh, my first match, it was one of those matches where uh, people had told you ahead of time, just, uh, just sh show up, bring your boots, bring your tights, Bring your pads, and if you know if we have something for you, I'll throw you on. It was one of those. Uh, weirdly enough, the person that was supposed to work, my trainer Jared Priest, uh, didn't show up that day, and so it's like Moody, 
you're in? I'm like, oh, sure, I'll, I'll, yeah, I got, I got my gear. And so they, uh, <laughs> the thing is, they told me about 10 minutes before the match was supposed to happen. So I'm nervous as shit, throwing my gear on. My trainer's in the ring cutting a promo about the other person so we don't get to talk about the match at all. Um, and uh, literally just before he went out, he just goes, hey, uh, I'm gonna call Crossbody, I'm gonna catch you. Listen to me out there and left. <laughs> and then me and him had a six minute match. I had my first match with this guy named Prince Iakea who used to wrestle in WCW for uh, a while and he uh, it went really well second match didn't go very well I first match ever was a tag team match uh, me and someone I trained with his name is uh, Jake Andrews he's a wrestler around these parts uh, we were paired together I was like three months in we wrestled Aaron Xavier and uh, uh, Marco Anthony and it was a match that's, that's how it went it was a match it was too, too early for me to be out there, but you know, I think my whole family was there, so it was cute. It was a cute little match. My first match was, uh, I'll say, three years and a couple months. Uh, it was a squash match, not, nothing in particular. I still have some pictures from Facebook, and that's a, those are the matches that made me realize now that in the place that I am, that when I'm working with younger generations or younger wrestlers, that if I know they're good, I can bring the best out of them in the first match. My first match, uh, Chicago style wrestling this past July, um, I faced Deuce Trey, also known as Doug Simmons, if you know who he is. Um, he, uh, he plays a, like an African gimmick, like Nation of Domination, but he's, he's, a, he's a white dude. So it was like, <laughs> he was getting a lot, like tons of booze for it, and I came out and he, like, we had a really simple, five to seven minute match, told a, a really great story, and you know, that's when I knew, like, this is, I'm gonna keep doing this. Until you make it big, wrestling isn't even your full-time job. Wrestling, it is my current full-time job, and more. I dream, poop, eat, wrestling. <laughs> uh, as far as you know, yes, wrestling is my full-time job. No, um, I wrestle probably three to four shows per weekend, uh, so I make a, little bit of money doing it, but to supplement my income and to actually like pay rent and pay the bills and eat, uh, I drive Lyft and Uber like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then for whatever reason I don't have a, normally I have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday bookings. Let's say I don't have a Friday one weekend, maybe I'll drive Lyft or Uber Friday. Uh, but it's good because, you know, you can pick your own hours and I know a lot of, uh, a lot of indie wrestlers are doing it too so that they can actually live this crazy schedule of being available for all these different companies that are everywhere. Uh, I work at a, uh, a travel company, mostly for old people, uh, but they're super cool about it. Like when I went to Germany to train there, I told them about two months ahead of time, like, hey, I'm gonna spend five weeks in Germany starting in November. And they're just like, oh, instead of being assholes about it, and like, hey kid, you can't, you can't have your job if you don't, just, they just ask questions and are super excited for me, so work for a good company that lets me wrestle uh, on the weekends at this point. But I actually think I might be one of the few uh, few people here that does like a, you know, a normal like white collar, uh, like suit and tie job. So I'm a, I do information security. Um, so I do some consulting for that for other third party uh, organizations. Uh, I deal with PCI compliance. So it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of weird um, I sit there in the office and then like people will like see the Instagram videos or like Facebook posts of like what I do on my weekends and they think I'm absolutely crazy. Sometimes you have to go a long way too. The, the only the furthest I've ever traveled was about two hours so far. Germany is, is the furthest I traveled for WXW. New Jersey or North Carolina. I think North Carolina's farther. Uh, I think New Jersey was like 14 hours. I'm not sure. The, the thing with North Carolina was when I went both times, uh, one time we had four people in the car, the other time we had five, so there's breaks. With like uh, the New Jersey trips I've done, uh, like one, it was just me and another dude, another, it was me alone. So I would say the New Jersey trips were like the hardest, but the North Carolina trips are a little more fun. Furthest I've traveled for a show so far, I think it's a t tie. I, I, I've spent a, some time in North Dakota, which I think was 12 hours. And then very recently we did a loop of the South. I was in Alabama for a weekend. I'm pretty sure that was 12 hours there. Shoot. Japan? Yeah. Japan and Europe? London? I was in London for a little bit. Through all the struggles and hardships, does the thought of quitting ever enter their minds? 
every day. Every other day. Uh, when you get up in the morning or you are in the middle of the night and you wake up because you are super tired and you are super sore and your bones hurt and everything hurts, that's when you're like wondering if it's worth all the stuff that you're doing in the future, especially like putting, putting, um, putting up the time away for just become successful and like not being able to have kids, have a family like, like regular people do, not able to see your family all the time. Uh, miss birthdays and stuff like that, that's when I started like wondering if this is worth it. But then, when you see that, the impact that you're creating in other people's lives, and it is positive, then you're like, yeah. I've not yet considered giving up on wrestling. I don't know what else I would have to do if I gave up on wrestling. Seven, eight years from now, like, I'm at the same point, like, my body will be breaking down by that, by that point. And if I'm not getting a hefty paycheck to make it, make it worthwhile, I'll, I'll stop. But it's, it's so much fun. It's the best. I don't think so. I mean, I think like, I think every wrestler has those days where they wake up and they're like, man, this sucks. I don't really want to do this. But I never like seriously considered for more than like a couple minutes like that I didn't want to do this. I, I when I, uh, when I decided to pull the trigger on attending my first day of wrestling school in Florida and I was like, I'm gonna do this. I, I had this kind of weird moment with myself where I looked in the mirror and I, I said to myself, like, I don't think I really said it out loud, but like I verbally like, or I uh, didn't verbally say it, but I looked at myself in the mirror and was kind of like, if I'm gonna do this, I know where this story is gonna have to end and it's not gonna be on the indies. <laughs> so who knows, it might end on the indies, it might end tomorrow, uh, but I have an idea where I want to go with this and I'm not going to stop until I get there or at least I'm going to go down swinging. The uh, most, most trying time for me was just getting started, you know, uh, and realizing you're not good, <laughs> you know, like first like couple months into wrestling and you're not like a superstar like you, you, know, like you, like you want to be and you're like you're self-aware that this isn't easy and it's not, it doesn't get easier quick. That was the most trying time for me when I was like, I don't know if I could do this. But, you know, kept going and here I am. Trying time, I think a lot of it is just the, uh, the training. Like if you don't, to really do well, and I feel like if you ask anybody that is doing well, whether they're, you know, whether it's AJ Styles right now, or it's somebody that's just making a name for themselves in the Indies, it's the people that train on a regular basis that nobody sees. I think it's the, uh, the three or four hours uh, you put in every other day in the gym or training, that's where, uh, that's where a lot of it is. Just being able to like do your fifth time where you're doing a 90 second uh, a plank where you just wanna fucking die. And like, especially all of us, mo most people that are training have full-time jobs. You worked a full-time job, you're mentally exhausted because you worked your full-time job all day. And then you go and just bust your ass for two hours in uh, training to get better and you do from that. But that's, that's the hardest part. It's just really putting in that work that nobody sees. You know, it's just a realization that like, you know, where you're at, like you're at the bottom and you have to, you know, earn respect in, of some sort, so. Difficult time. Being away from my husband and my family for, for a long time and uh, being hurt in a, in a foreign country, that was like, I will say, one of the most challenging times because you don't have the people that you love and you feel you know, shelter and if you're, you feel safe. So it's like, you just, you just have to rely on other people and rely on, on their will, um, on, on them being good to you. So um, uh, when I, my first tour in Japan, I got concussed and um, I noticed uh, how good some people can be. And, and then ever since then I said, and I promised to myself that I will be doing the same thing to other people. You know, but that was really, really hard. Uh, most painful thing in wrestling so far, you know, adrenaline's a, a real thing. So like pain-wise, I'm not sure. Scariest thing is like anytime I've like hit my head or like compressed my neck. Just happened like a couple times, just, you know. Uh, that's <laughs> rather more pain, uh, scary than painful. Pain, pain is nothing. <laughs> this is real stupid, because this just happened. Uh, it was just during drills. I just did a face bump and uh, jammed my shoulder up into me and uh, pulled something in my pec real hard. And uh, for 
for about three weeks, like doing anything higher than this, just shot pain from the tip of my fingers to, of, on my left hand to the tip of my toes on my, on my left leg. And it was, it was literally a drill that nobody actually did anything to me. I took a 3D before. Um, it was actually not this past, not this month, but the last month I took a 3D. Um, I, 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 I jumped wrong and I kind of nosedive like Sasha Banks does when she like dives out. So I nosedive and the guy barely, he was off position and catches me and my head just cracks on the mat. And like, you know, like mostly like there's the cell where I'm like screaming, ah, uh, ah, uh, but really. No, when I would legit hurt myself, I sat up and I was like, oh my, oh my God. Oh, like actually hurt. When I'm actually hurt, I just say like, oh my God. So I had a match with Craig Mitchell and I did a, uh, Kind of like when uh, Seth Rollins did a curb stomp to Randy Orton, he did like a pop-up uh, cutter or a pop-up RKO. Um, I did that with Craig Mitchell once at a, a Galley Lucha Libre show, and it went perfect, got way up. He caught me, but instead of doing an RKO, he did a uh, curb stomp pop-up powerbomb, set up powerbomb. Okay. It was perfect, it was awesome, got tons of hype. Tried to do it again, I go to give him a curb stomp at a underground show, and Instead of going up, I went up to the side. So when he caught me and put me down, it was just all had to mat. <laughs> so that might have been it. That was definitely like a serious concussion. I will say when they chop you, that hurts. Like it depends who chop you, like that hurts. That or the forearms on the face, and forearms on the neck, some really stiff kicks. Uh, I will say shots. Those, when you're like with shooters and stuff, that's pretty painful. But when you make it and the crowd goes wild, there is nothing like it. Biggest fan reaction I've ever received was, it was uh, at a company called GPW, where uh, every show they have a battle royal. And I had underhandedly won battle the battle royal eight months in a row. And uh, just was just a real cocky asshole about it. And somebody, the elimination, me getting eliminated by somebody, that was an underdog the entire time, and uh, I did everything I could to just, uh, you know, low blow them, rake the eyes, pull the hair, everything I could, and they got me out. And the crowd reaction when uh, when I lost was probably the biggest one I got. After a good eight month run as champ, losing it was the biggest uh, biggest pop I got out of that. Kaiju Attack Wrestling was nuts in front of 300 people. Um, it's some bar in Berwyn, and I I walked out and they just they they blew up, so um, it's pretty awesome. For our biggest fan reaction, uh, freelance wrestling, probably the hottest uh, wrestling crowd I've ever been in front of, and once I started to build up steam there, getting those warm receptions every time we walk through those curtains, that, that's unlike anything. There's nothing like those crowds. They're, it's just a damn party every single night. I don't know if that was like the biggest or loudest reaction, but it really caught me off guard because like there, you know, there were guys that, like Colt Cabana on that show getting like a, a similar reaction. And I, like when I came out, I was, re I just really caught off guard. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm onto something here. I don't know. A lot of people in my shirts, I saw signs and I'd never like felt that before where I was like, wow, there's, there's a fair amount of people who came here to cheer for me. And it just caught me off guard and it was like really very, very humbling. I will say my last show in Austin, Texas, when um, we had our first intergender show in the state of Texas. My husband and I, we own a promotion out there. Uh, and at the end of the match, uh, everybody was like on their feet and like chanting my name. And I was just like, I was literally crying. That was like a, like a kind of like a WrestleMania moment sort of, because it, it was a lot of work and it was, people took it really well. So uh, I was really happy for that. The business is a crazy one. Like any job, there are bound to be some funny moments. It's, it's all of it to, to me. Uh, as somebody that comes from uh, a comedy and entertain, entertainment background, uh, that's something I constantly want to engage. If, if I'm spending, if, like I'm, if I'm up on top at the time and there's three or four seconds where I don't hear the crowd, like I'm going to go yell at someone to get the crowd back. Like there's not going to be anybody looking at their phone on a match, that's my goal. Um, I do stand up. My stand up is if I don't get a laugh every 15 seconds, I'm not doing well for a match. If I'm not get, if I'm on top, I'm not getting a reaction every five or six seconds. I'm not doing my job. So 
The crowd reaction is literally everything. They're the ones paying the tickets. They're the ones that eventually give me the money and give me the opportunity to do this thing that I love to do. Uh, if they're not reacting one way or the other, I'm not doing my job right. Uh, it's, a, it's, a huge, it's a huge part of it, because why, like, why am I working in front of people? Like, I'm supposed to entertain, so me seeing anything from a, like a loud like ver verbal reaction or like you know seeing that they're engaged and not on their phones and or smiling frowning like if i'm getting some form of emotional response um that's that's about all of wrestling to me if i'm new to the company and then um, i don't get any reaction it's fine too it's like what happens at the end when they come out to you and they're like, oh my god i never seen wrestling and from now on i'm gonna be your fan i love what you do I don't understand wrestling, but I love you. That's, for me, that's the reaction that I want. The, the travel stories I keep, I keep to myself because there's a couple crazy ones. There's, <laughs> in Germany, uh, there was far too many nights with me and a wrestler who's in, uh, based out of Philly now named Jackson Stone, uh, where we spent, we would be out at the, German nightclubs don't close until they decide they can't make money anymore. Um, so there were nights where we would stay out till seven in the morning on like a Thursday night and then like, oh sh we got to work Friday and Saturday. And so we'd sleep till 10, drive four hours, help set up a ring, find a place to get some rest, constantly chugging water so our body is rehydrated and then go work a match and like, fuck, we got to pass out, we got to take down the ring, we got to travel somewhere else then we can sleep for three more hours. So I think the craziest stories, it's not really a crazy story, it's just a crazy thing you put yourself through more than anything of just, uh, you know, we're also young and having fun, but at the same time, we got a job to do, so we're gonna do both. It's all crazy. Yeah, all of, it, all of wrestling is crazy. All, every car trip is crazy. If I'm not sleeping, something silly is happening. Funny stories, I mean, when you get into indie wrestling, the people involved are just funny overall. So there's a lot of funny stories, uh, but I think it's more just funny people. So you just meet a lot of silly people and run into a lot of funny situations. I got nothing off the top of my head, like no like uh, Randy Orton pooping in someone's gym bag stories, nothing like that. It, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That one time I was like, I was a volunteer and these two girls had a match, right? And they went like for real, they were fighting outside. The match was over, they ended up short. They came back in the back and they were for real fighting. They had to pull them out. It was, I was just like, damn, people need to calm down. I see myself in two or three years uh, being able to have it as a full-time gig, you know, to where uh, I can, right now, one of the main reasons I have the job I have is they provide really good health insurance and uh, wrestling's a tough business. And if uh, I throw my back out, you know, if instead of me just, like jamming or pulling my pack, I tore it, I need surgery, uh, I need something to cover that. So make doing well enough to where I could afford that, I think, is a big part of it. Being able to live still a comfortable life and enjoy the life that, uh, enjoy wrestling and enjoy the things I wanna do. That's what I wanna be in two or three years. It's, it's hard to say where I think I'm gonna be in a few years. I, I didn't know if I'd make it this far, so. I I don't even like to speculate on where I'm going to be. I just, I'm just going, I'm riding the wave. I definitely see myself being more a, a, of a teacher to uh, some of the girls in, in Texas. That's the reason why I moved. Um, I really, I, I love coaching. Um, but uh, right now I'm just going with the flow. I, I, got, I have a couple of, of goals in mind. I want to work for RH. Uh, I want to work for some promotions here in the United States. I want to go and travel back, I don't know, to London again to work in some promotions. Australia, uh, hopefully uh, wrestle one more time in my city in Tijuana. And then from there on, I just want to coach and, and focus more on like my, my career, what I was doing, either social work or maybe personal training because I love fitness. Uh, my ultimate goal, my ultimate goal in wrestling is just to finish up and be proud of myself. You know, I, I, you know just be proud of my craft. I don't know what the highest point is. I'd like to get to that point, but Man, I just want to look back at this, you know, rather unscathed and happy with myself. I don't see myself getting to uh, 
you know, Ring of Honor or New Japan or anything, but, you know, I, I, I could see myself, you know, building a brand and, you know, hopefully selling shirts and, you know, making some, making some side cash, some real side cash on the side. Was just a, rest, a wrestling fan, I, I just remember sitting there and watching, you know, Shawn Michaels on his knees holding the belt, and I remember watching CM Punk uh, win uh, Cena's belt at Money in the Bank, and, like, for me, like, I want that moment at the end, like, that, that storybook ending. Um, so it, it's not necessarily me winning the WWE championship, but it's being a top player in the largest company in the world for wrestling. So whether that means being in the main event of WrestleMania, I think that's the way I would summarize it as. Uh, that's the way I look at it. I think, I think if you're in the main event of WrestleMania, that's a better spot than being the WWE championship because I'm not really that big on like belts. But the first goal, obviously, is to make a living as a wrestler. So my first huge milestone is like I want to be doing this for a living, whether that's on the indies, whether that's WWE, whether that's in a different country. Um, we'll see. But that's the first goal, and then we'll worry about that other goal that's a little farther. But that's where I want my story to end.